The bodies of Italian ambassador Luca Atanasio and his bodyguard Vittorio uh, Lacovacci arrived back in Italy on Tuesday with their coffins draped with the Italian flag. According to Congo's presidency, the two-car convoy was stopped on the road near Goma by six armed men who killed driver Mustafa Milambo and led the six other passengers away. The army and uh, park rangers tracked the group and uh, a firefight ensued during which the kidnappers shot the two Italians. Both uh, WFP and the uh, United Nations have asked for a report on the incident. The body of Italy's envoy to Democratic Republic of Congo and his bodyguard were being returned home on Tuesday to a country in mourning. Flags at half-mast in Rome as a mark of respect following the killings of Ambassador Luca Atanasio, military policeman Vittorio Iacovacci and Congolese driver Mustafa Milambo. Killed in an ambush in Congo's eastern North Kivu province. Congo's President Felix Tshisekedi has dispatched an envoy with a personal letter to Italy's president and sent his top diplomatic advisor to assist local investigations in North Kivu. But in the regional capital Goma, Atanasio's friend Dario Tedesco believes it's important to remember this is not just an international tragedy, but also a family one. I don't cry much, really. I don't cry at all, even. And yesterday I felt so, so poor. I, yeah, I, I lost someone. We lost someone. And most of all, I have to be honest, I was thinking to his wife and, uh, and the three daughters. And that's... That's a tragedy, you know, it's a tragedy for us. Tedesco, a volcanologist in the Central African country, had dinner with Atanasio on Sunday night. The next day, his friend, Ayakavachi and Milambo were killed. Milambo leaves behind four children, according to a Congolese rights activist. The victims were part of a two-vehicle United Nations convoy heading to visit a school feeding program in a town north of Goma. According to Congo's presidency, the attackers stopped the convoy and killed Milambo. They were leading passengers away when army and park rangers engaged them in a firefight. The attackers shot Ayakavachi dead. Atanasio was wounded in the abdomen. He died several hours later in a UN peacekeeping hospital. Congo's interior ministry has blamed a Hutu militia called the Democratic Force for the Liberation of Rwanda, one of 120 armed groups operating in eastern Congo. But on Tuesday, it denied any involvement and condemned the attack as a cowardly assassination. Well, meanwhile, Italian Foreign Minister Luigi Di, Di Maio on Wednesday addressed the lower house of parliament on the attack in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which killed the Italian ambassador, his bodyguard and driver. Di Maio says that receiving the bodies was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking last night to receive alongside Prime Minister Draghi and the families the bodies of our two compatriots who were victims of the cowardly ambush that cut short their young lives and devastated the lives of their loved ones. A tragic homecoming that fills us with anguish. At the same time, our hearts are filled with astonished sorrow and deep pride for these men who sacrificed their lives while in service to Italy, to peace, and while assisting the weakest. The mission was carried out at the invitation of the United Nations. So the car journey took place within the organizational framework set up by the World Food Program. For this reason, I immediately asked the WFP in Rome and the United Nations, directly involving UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, to provide a detailed report on the attack on the World Food Program convoy. The Democratic Republic of Congo's government has called on foreign diplomats to inform it of their movements outside the capital Kinshasa following the killing of the Italian ambassador. For more on this, we're now joined via Skype from Lubumbashi DRC by the Kinshasa Times editor, Eme Zonveni. Eme, thanks so much for joining us. Always good to talk to you about uh, issues uh, in your country. Um, let's start with that uh, um, 
this attack and that uh, this uh, uh, World Food Program uh, convoy was targeted. Uh, I believe, and I, what I heard was that this road had been cleared by security as safe to travel. What went wrong, do you think? Well, I think in the eastern parts of the DRC, the situation is so volatile that a road can be cleared in the morning and then in, in the afternoon again becomes very dangerous due to the presence of so many uh, armed groups, negative forces that have been operating there some for even 25 years now. So uh, it does not guarantee security, the fact that a road has been declared uh, safe to travel on. All right, so at this stage, Trying to find out who did it has been the big question. The uh, authorities are pointing at uh, this uh, Rwandan uh, rebel group and they've denied it. Why do you think the authorities are pointing at... Uh... I think the authorities are trying to get at the easiest... Uh, target which uh, is the democratic forces for the liberation of Rwanda because this, these forces have been present in Eastern DRC dating back to the time of Rwanda genocide, meaning uh, since 1994 when they fled from Rwanda into the DRC. But then in that part of the DRC, there are many other uh, rebel movements, other negative forces uh, operating there. So it becomes difficult to immediately without even conducting an investigation, arriving at the conclusion that it is the FDLR. And that is why they immediately deny the fact that they were involved into the ambush and the, the killing of the Italian ambassador. Now, the groups in that part of the country usually uh, own up to uh, their killings. Why might it not be the case this time? Is it because of who was killed? Partly because of who was killed, and also because of the fact that claiming responsibility might immediately place the group that will claim responsibility uh, on the wrong side of, um, of, of, of political or, or uh, many other implications that may ensue. I think right now it will be difficult to establish responsibility simply because uh, in that part of the country, the modus operandi of neg negative forces, therefore, mostly is to try and abduct travelers, high-profile travelers, and then demand ransom. It has happened with two British tourists a couple of years earlier. It is very frequent. So sometimes it's not just military activity. It's simply an economic way for those groups operating there to survive. Listening to the story, uh, it sounds as if this might have been exactly what you're describing a kidnapping that perhaps went wrong. Indeed, according to what, to, to what was said immediately after the, the killing of the ambassador, it is reported that what those six uh, the kidnappers wanted, I think, was just a ransom. But then, uh, after they abducted the group and they, they first killed the, the WFP uh, driver, then abducted the ambassador and his bodyguards, this became clear that uh, it, became, it was a ransom and uh, an abduction went wrong and that's why the park rangers and some of the, the, the DRC armed forces that were nearby tried to rescue them and maybe that's the very fact that caused, that prompted the abductors to return fire and also kill uh, the, the, the people that were abducted. So it probably was a uh, an abduction went wrong. Um, Aime, who do you think might be behind this? Is, could this just be bandits? It's difficult to tell. Even after an investigation, a thorough investigation is conducted, it would be difficult to tell. First, because of the many numbers of uh, negative forces operating there. And also because of the, the, the fact that the convoy seemed to be not appropriately protected by the United Nations or by the usual security measures that should be surrounding such a high-profile 
passenger traveling uh, in that part of the country, to me, it will be difficult to, to, to really get to the bottom of this. But this is only indicative of the fact that Eastern DRC is very volatile and is, is, a, is, is, the part, is one of the first or one of the most insecure parts of the world. Sadly, this is daily life for many uh, Congolese in that part of the country. But now with uh, the Italian ambassador being killed, this has put it on the news map in a major way. Might this force some action from the DRC authorities, uh, DRC army to try and get to the bottom of this and perhaps even deal with this uh, uh, insurgency uh, in this part of the country? Let's only hope so, but I would, I, I would still be very doubtful because it's, this is not the first time the DRC has witnessed the killing of a high-profile diplomat. Only in 2017, two uh, United Nations investigators, Michael Sharp and uh, Zaida Catalan, were killed in another part of the country. The investigations, which was re uh, demanded, never uh, got to the point of fixing the security problem in that part of the country. You might even want to go back even to 1993 when the French ambassador was also killed, or even back to the country's independence in 61 when United Nations Secretary General Dag Hammarskjöld was also I mean, killed in a, in a crash involving the RC security issue. So there have been similar incidents, but the bottom line is security the security problem is still there. But now that uh, an ambassador is, is killed in the eastern part of the DRC, this might prompt the United Nations, and more specifically its uh, largest uh, United Keep, uh, its largest peacekeeping missions, which is in the DRC for nearly two decades now, and the DRC government to try and tackle mm. the, the issue of insecurity in uh, eastern DRC. All right. And of course, the victims of this. Uh, beyond uh, those that were killed are the citizens on the ground because on the one hand they're constantly facing this threat of loss of life, abductions uh, and, and so on and so forth but now it must be more difficult for organizations such as the World Food Programme to do their work of assisting those people in the region. Uh, not only the WFP, but also many other international organizations, I mean, NGOs operating there. The issue is, is it, it involves the region. It, it does not only involve the DRC, because most of these negative forces operating there are from neighboring countries, either Uganda or Rwanda. So this, this, the solution would definitely require the DRC to be busy trying to provide security to its people, but also involve the region and try to arrive at a regional solution that, uh, that restores peace in a definitive fashion in that part of the DRC. Is the problem of militants uh, in the east of DRC something that can be solved and dealt with? Well, it has been there for the past uh, 25 years now. Some solutions have been attempted. There was even a, a regional agreement, which was called the, 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 the Peace Pact, involving uh, neighboring countries, the, the aim of which was to find a final solution to the problem. I think now the time is right for those regional agreements to be put back on the table and to get all the nations involved to try and find the definitive solutions. But that being said, the new political dispensation in the DRC with uh, President Chisekedi will effectively need to deploy uh, the appropriate amount of troops there and uh, guarantee uh, security to the, to the local population. This is work in progress, and I really hope that uh, as President Chisekedi is now more uh, in command of the country, he should be able to, to advance on that agenda. Monfrey, uh, as usual, thank you so much indeed uh, for your time and your insights uh, in your country. Thanks so much indeed. Thank you for having me.